there's a very strong uh, symbolism that, that we can pick from the past. My father represented manhood in, in Africa, masculinity, virility. If I could reduce all my arrogance enough to learn from Madaraka, At 5,895 meters, Kilimanjaro is the highest freestanding mountain in the world. Also making it recently recognized as one of the several natural wonders of the world. A now dormant volcano, Kilimanjaro towers above East Africa's Rift Valley. the birthplace of the human race. While thousands come from all over the world and have a thousand different reasons to climb Kilimanjaro, more people die on this mountain than on Mount Everest. For Ugandan Jafar Amin and Tanzanian Madaraka Nyerere, this is more than a potentially deadly challenge to reach the top. Their climb is a journey of peace, of discovery, of reconciliation. In the 1970s, the presidents of Uganda and Tanzania did not see eye to eye. Their tumultuous relationship finally resulted in all-out war. That was seen by most as a battle for the soul of post-colonial Africa, as this was the first war between independent African states. The question was this. Would post-colonial Africa be shaped by military strongmen or socialist visionaries? A world defined by Idi Amin Dada, the dictator of Uganda, or Julius Nyerere, the founding father and president of Tanzania? Their sons have lived very different lives and yet have some striking similarities. Madara Kanyerere is known for charity work and is often invited to public events to celebrate the legacy of his father. Jafar Amin spent much of his formative years in exile in Saudi Arabia, the only one in his family who has come back to Uganda to lead a public life. One brought up Catholic, the other a devout Muslim. But both are writers fathers, husbands, proud Africans. I kept on meeting people from outside the country who have climbed Kilimanjaro. And each time they ask me, have you climbed Kilimanjaro? I go, no. So I, I decided that uh, I wouldn't want to answer no again to that question. Madaraka challenged his East African neighbor to climb to the peak of the mountain together. I've always loved a challenge. To let the past be a learning lesson for Africans where they can come together huh? 
and actually start appreciating the beauty of the country, of, the, of their region, whether it is the East African community or Tanzania in particular. So, these African men who have traveled such different paths <laughs> will find out just how different they really are. They will challenge each other's notions of their fathers and perhaps make peace with the past. Together with a number of friends and guides, they will commit to a grueling, often dangerous week-long climb through five distinct climate zones. Tropical rainforest, heat zone, moorland, alpine desert, and the treacherous icy wasteland of the Arctic zone, where they hope on the seventh day to reach Uhuru Peak and the roof of Africa. On the way, they will surely have to confront each other with the past. But unlike their fathers, whose conflict lasted almost eight months, making this journey together over a week's time should lead to a better understanding of each other and of their continent, Africa. From the beginning of the victory on Tumkubwa. We call it the Kagera War in Tanzania, but it's the, it was the war fought between Tanzania and Uganda in 1979. And uh, that's, that's where uh, everyone decided that, uh, that our two fathers are enemies. The school teacher socialist Julius Nyerere, who was president of Tanzania from 1964 to 1985, is revered as one of the key figures in the movement for liberation from colonialism. Though he ruled with a one-party state, he is one of the most popular leaders in African history. Ugandans celebrated when the military strongman, Idi Amin, took power in 1971 because he also resisted colonialism. But in time, Idi Amin became a corrupt and bloodthirsty tyrant who is estimated to have sanctioned the murder of hundreds of thousands of his own people. 79 was a nasty thing, but it started way back when they said we cannot have a soldier. His father would say we cannot have a soldier as a ruler. Idi Amin had long distrusted Julius Nyerere. After he seized power in 1971, the man he overthrew, Milton Obote, settled in Tanzania. In 1978, several political intrigues inside Uganda threatened the Idi Amin regime. Idi chased some mutineers off to Tanzania, eventually deciding to invade. The Tanzanian army fought back and repelled the Ugandan invasion. Julius Nyerere chose to continue into Uganda, and the Tanzanian troops overthrew the Amin regime. Idi Amin and his family fled into exile and finally settled in Saudi Arabia. Jafar was only 13 years old when he was forced to leave home in East Africa. It was an experience in and a half. Exile, flight, culture clash, coming from the beauty of, uh, of the equatorial region to desert. There was incredible retribution. From 1979, you were practically killed for being a particular religion. You were practically killed for being from, from the Kakwa or from the West Nile region. If you put Idi Amin's name or his picture in your room, believe you me, they would mete out retribution to you. And today, 
no one in my family feels they have the courage to stand up and be counted. Mm. Jafar eventually left Saudi Arabia to study in England, where he kept a low profile. <laughs> Returning to Uganda in 1990, he finally decided he couldn't stay away from his African home. Hiking onwards and upwards, moving out of the rainforest and into the heath zone. Madaraka and Jafar share very different childhood memories. I come from a massive family. Officially we claim we are 40, but I've personally counted, I've tabulated it up to 60. Getting that window of opportunity with your parent from an extremely large family, and then somebody who was actually more or less a king in his society, a ruler rather than a statesman. It means we had very little time with him. We didn't have so much contact with, with families of other leaders, of other heads of state or presidents. And so when we, we were growing up, we didn't have anything to compare our childhood with. We were taken to schools which every other Tanzanian went to, um, so we didn't go to any special schools. And, and that's, to us, that was normal to us. We didn't think like we, were, we had to live a better life uh, than others. We had to um, compete on merit, on, on our grades, and not on our names, on, on, our, uh, on who our father was. He's more jolly than I expected. He's such a reserved fellow. Nobody recognizes me except just because someone has said, pointed me out. Ah, do you know who that is? Yeah. Then I become a celebrity for a few hours. <laughs> but I've been given this column and I write. I, I don't have any training as a journalist, but I've, I've taken some writing courses. And I think sometimes when the stars are aligned correctly, I write some good articles. <laughs> My father represented manhood in, in Africa, masculinity, virility. He was one of Africa's ultimate strong men. Not everyone comes and tries to look at the softer side or the silver lining of who my father was. But me as a child, I, I promised myself to show more of the humanity. I've never had a need to feel defensive. When you're confident, you answer. You don't, you don't fear the repercussions of what you say. True. <laughs> Most people I meet in Tanzania, they immediately compare me to him. And so they expect to see certain, certain values that he upheld in me. And I think even, though, even his critics say that. He was not a, a corrupt person. He did not amass, amass wealth. He had a genuine interest in uh, ensuring that, that the ordinary life of the people was improved. So it's, it's not so much pressure because I think uh, generally 
I accept the values that he upheld, and so it's not like I'm, I'm struggling to keep up with what he tried to be in his life. On day four, the serious climbing begins. The goal is to reach 4,500 meters. The mountain guides have been encouraging the climbers to walk slowly. This high, they risk mountain sickness, a potentially fatal condition caused by high altitude and decreasing oxygen. They must move deliberately to acclimatize. How high are we now? It should be more than 4,000. How are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. Um. The African leaders always act like chiefs or kings. That's the way they rule. They expect us to be subjects. They've always ruled in a particular way, which was actually copying the colonial format. The colonizers, the plunderers, felt they had to dehumanize the population to enable them to take what they felt they deserved. The misunderstanding was that my father, an African, was actually using the same form of rulership that the colonialists used on us for over 72 years. That's the dilemma Africa is still grappling with today. My father's main legacy is he fought uh, tirelessly for the unity of this country. The relative peace that we have, we have enjoyed from, from independence up till now, compared to the civil strife that you find in some of the countries which, which surround us. Kilimani slash puppy. Kilimani slash puppy. African slash puppy, the natural way. Mm. The real thing. Mm? <laughs> <laughs> the stiff, almost 250 meter climb up the Barranco Wall is the challenge that faces Madaraka and Jafar on the fifth day on the mountain. People mainly porters, die every year here from altitude sickness, hypothermia, heart attacks, or brain bleeds. Some lose their balance and fall from the slippery rocks. They mark the spot where, the spot where one, of, one of the porters died while uh, working. Uh, sometimes they might know who it is, but uh, Amisi says it's, uh, he just knows that it's someone from, from Arusha, but doesn't, he doesn't know the name. When contemplating the lives that are lost on the mountain, Madaraka and Jafar are also left wondering about the lives that have been lost to political struggle and war. There's a very strong uh, symbolism that, that we can pick from the past. The fact that um, our countries at a certain time were at war and his father was leading that con uh, the other country and my father was leading Tanzania. It should be seen that we are together. This is very important. Uh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Fast sons across the, con uh, the continent 
whether their fathers have Swiss accounts or not, have to give back. It's the onus is on us to be seen to be giving back to society. It doesn't have to be money. It's just your time. I can't stop loving my parent, but I have to be able to show that there's something positive that we can do in this world. <laughs> Whoa! There we go, thanks. That's actually it, huh? Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> He has a cordial approach to life, just like his dad. And if I can reduce all my arrogance enough to learn from Madaraka, I feel I have a lot I can learn. And learning from him is very important for me. He was using something that was a tried and tested way of ruling Africa. And unfortunately, the same strong man style of rulership is still with us today. We still have not turned the corner. Whatever warm. Good warm, yeah, sun. Yeah. Like the advisors that helped the fathers navigate the difficult landscape of African politics, the mountain guides brought Madaraka and Jafar toward their goal. The sure-footed mountain guides epitomize the best of both confident and compassionate leadership. We are now right on top of the Baranko Wa. Oh, breakfast. Wow. How are you done? Great. Good. Good. You know, mine heights. It's a bit scary, but it's good. I suffer from acrophobia, uh, fear of heights, but I'm not looking down. Madaraka's porch. <laughs> <laughs> Why the need? I've got natural melanin. Why sunscreen? I always fight against this. I don't know why. <laughs> All aboard the night train. <laughs> Kilimanjaro, out of all the seven continental summits, has the highest failure rate. So many get turned back on this final seven-hour grind to the top. Nice. <coughs> get your balance before you take your next step. That's really important because sometimes you might think you're stepping on, on, on stable ground and suddenly you find that you're stepping on something which is not stable and you might twist your ankle. So get firm footing on your leg before you take the, the next step. Many say it's a very good thing that the climbers do most of the last stretch in the dark. Because if they knew how far and how steep it is, they'd give up and go back. But again, it's the guides, the leaders, Supportive and strong at every step of the challenge. Easy. And keeping spirits as high as a summit.
What was my relationship to this man? This misunderstood man, this, this man who shares both accolade and abhorrence equally. It's, it's an incredible catch-22 situation for me as, as his son. How can you love somebody who others claim is amoral or immoral? To the world's sensibilities or religious sensibilities. And you ask yourself, okay, I think he took a stand and he said, you guys, colonialism was wrong, slavery was wrong, racism was wrong. I think that's where he gains his accolade. And I say, okay, that little light might be the, the thing that can actually bring us together. The first time I met him, I felt he was trying too much to protect his father's past or trying to correct it, as he would say sometimes. But uh, I would imagine it's really difficult to to try to do that. It's, it's uh, the, the overwhelming uh, image that people have about his father is negative. So I've I've tried to tell him just to to try and stay away from the past and try and focus on the present and the future. And I think um, I think he's managing to do that. So. It's, uh, it's not easy, but I think he's trying to, to do that. So when I see the quiet dignity of my friend Madaraka Nyerere and the warmth towards me and the acceptance, it is simply me being able to say I can live my life out of the shadow of my father. It's a kind of miracle if you think about it. <laughs> we being here, being real friends, me seeing him as a brother. That's a miracle, by the way. <laughs> Let's just get to Uhuru Peak. We will. <laughs> Knock on the wood! <laughs> My director, thank you for trusting me enough to come. It means something to me. Thank you for accepting the invitation. I made this brotherhood last forever. You're the brother I've ever had. Thanks. <laughs> Kilimanjaro, 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 Mlima Mrefu Sana. Ewe nyoka, ewe nyoka, ewe nyoka. Ewe nyoka, mbona wanizunguka. Wanizunguka, wanizunguka.